Orcs. For many species in the Warhammer 40k universe, war is a grim necessity, a core aspect of their lives that must continue for their own survival. For Orcs, however, spelled with a K, violence is closer to a religion, as practically every Orc possesses an innate love for bloodshed. Orcs are primitive, savage, numerous beyond measure, and one of the most integral aspects of Warhammer 40,000. In this video, we'll take a look at Orc history in the Milky Way, their culture, and their unique physiology. Orcs did not have a natural creation, but instead were originally engineered by the Old Ones, an ancient, technologically advanced race, in order to help them combat their enemies, namely the Necrons. The original Orcs created by the Old Ones were called the Krork, and they were made to be essentially living weapons. Aggressive, dim-witted, and strong, some standing as tall as 12 meters. It's believed that specific knowledge was built into their genetic codes, such as how to build simple machinery, as well as a collaborative psychic ability that I'll discuss later. The Old Ones ultimately lost their war, and Krorks would eventually descend into the multitudes of different Orc subspecies. Orc physiology is quite unique, essentially a fusion of both animal and fungus. Orcs are grown, not born, as each subspecies grows from spores that develop underground. Some grow into more simple fungi, used as a food source. Others grow into different life forms, such as squigs, snotlings, gretchen, or orcs, which are all technically part of the orcoid family. Squigs are the most basic intelligent life forms in the orcoid family, coming in many different varieties that are used for food, warfare, or other strange purposes, such as providing hair for an orc. Snotlings are diminutive orcoids, resembling what would commonly be called a goblin, and work as caretakers for the fungi and the squigs, while also serving as pets for larger orcs. Gretchen, or grots, are similar to snotlings, being smaller and weaker than orcs, and are generally used for menial tasks that orcs would rather not do. Orcs are at the top of the food chain, and are the primary fighting group amongst the orcoids. Their unique physiology gives them a number of advantages in war, including a very strong muscular system, thick, dense bones, and the replacement of their internal organs with a sort of fungal soup. Their fungal nature allows them to survive from grievous injuries that would easily kill a human, up to and including stitching their whole bodies back together, and it's believed they can also photosynthesize. When encountering a new planet, orcoid spores are spread across the surface constantly by adult orcs, growing into the different orcoid species, who establish a new orcoid society there. It's said that a world touched by orcs will practically always be plagued by them, since it's very difficult to eradicate all of the spores. Orcs are, of course, the dominant group amongst the orcoids, but they too follow a hierarchy and caste system, with many different varieties amongst them. At the top is the war boss, generally the largest orc within a tribe or war band, since orcs continue to grow as they age and succeed in battle. Orcs have a strong tendency to fight amongst themselves as much as they fight others, but they will rally around a strong enough war boss. Beneath the war boss are the Odd Boys, groups of orcs that are grown with specific knowledge built into their DNA, making them capable of performing tasks that other orcs simply cannot. There are four main groups of Odd Boys. Mech Boys, who know how to build guns, vehicles, and machines. Pain Boys, who know how to fix injuries and wounds. Weird Boys, who know how to channel psychic energy into violent outbursts. And Run Thirds, who know how to breed Snotlings and Gretchen. For all of the Odd Boys, it's not a position an orc can work towards, but instead they are either born with the knowledge or not. Beneath them are the Knobs, members of orcs that are simply physically larger than most other orcs, and therefore usually command more respect. 
They will often lead groups of orcs and take the best pick of found weapons and armor. Finally are the boys, the most common group of orcs, smaller than knobs, but still highly deadly and savage in mass. Boys will often fall into different subgroups based on their specialties in combat, such as the Burna Boys that utilize flame weapons, the Storm Boys that use jump packs, Biker Boys that ride war bikes, or Commandos that specialize in stealth. Different groups of different types of orcs will comprise a war band, usually led by a war boss, and a number of war bands will often be joined together as part of a single tribe. Tribes will often fight other tribes if they're not fighting enemies, and so positions will constantly switch around as tribes conquer one another. Beyond this though, orcs will almost always belong to a specific clan, of which there are supposedly many, but really only six significant ones. An orc clan is joined together by a mutual philosophy, or way of life. The Bad Moons clan, for example, functions as something akin to a merchant class, while the Evil Sons clan shares a love of fast vehicles. An orc might be a part of countless tribes throughout their life, but they carry a much stronger bond to a single clan. Orcs worship two deities, Gork and Mork. It's said that Gork is brutal but cunning, while Mork is cunning but brutal, making them mostly interchangeable. The orcs say that Gork and Mork are in a perpetual battle between one another, and exist in the warp, much like the Chaos Gods. The average orc lifestyle revolves around violence, and so it's deeply ingrained in their society and culture. Orcs sweep across the galaxy, spreading spores everywhere they go, and fighting everything they meet, including themselves. If left unchecked, and if they managed to unite to any significant degree, there would be little that could stop the orc hordes. They outnumber practically every other species in existence, save perhaps for the Tyranids. Orcs wage war using a number of different weapons and machines, from basic melee weapons to giant ramshackle mechs covered in large guns. Any sort of crude melee weapon, such as a sharpened piece of scrap metal, is called a choppa, while larger variants, sometimes outfitted with whirring chainsaw blades, are called big choppas. The basic ranged weapon for most orcs is called a slugga, generally a semi-automatic pistol that fires large caliber bullets, and many boys carry both a choppa and a slugga. Burna boys carry stripped down flame weapons called burnas, Rocket Boys carry rocket launches, and Shooter Boys use very loud automatic firearms called, as you might have guessed, Shootas. Variants and combinations exist of all of these, plus many others, and there's no uniform design for any of them, as Mech Boys will piece together whatever they can into weaponry and machinery. Crude Orc analogs exist for practically anything else you'd expect to see in an army, including tanks, planes, and helicopters, as well as stuff you might not expect to see, such as motorcycles. Overall, most orcs care more about how loud, fast, or explosive something is than how actually effective it is. The real trick, though, is how the orcs actually manage to utilize all of this unsafe and questionable technology, as it differs from every other species in the Milky Way. I mentioned earlier that orcs possess a collaborative psychic ability, and this is really the key to how the orcs continue to function. This psychic field is called the WAG, although pronunciation is a little tricky since it's typically roared at full volume. The WAG allows for a number of different effects, including allowing the weird boys to channel the ambient psychic energy from fellow orcs. The main effect, however, is that it allows orc technology to function simply if the orcs believe it will function. As an example, many of their guns are simply filled with random bolts and bits of metal inside, but since they're in the form of a gun, and the orc believes it will shoot bullets, it does. When someone else, such as a human, attempts to use orc technology, it fails to function completely, 
as you would expect. This effect extends across all of the orc technology, and many modifications are done by orcs because they believe that they will make a difference. Again, as an example, since orcs believe that painting a vehicle red makes it go faster, their red vehicles do go faster. This psychically functioning technology allows the mech boys to use practically anything to make new weapons and vehicles, and can repair destroyed machines dozens of times, and they'll still function. This psychic field also leads into the second definition of WOG. Orcs require battle the way we require water, and so most of the time they carry out small skirmishes against other orc tribes or any other enemies they can get their hands on. These are very small scale, however, and the orc population will continue to grow until it reaches a critical point, when the shared psychic field, fueled by aggression, gathers all of the orcs on a planet together, and they launch into a warpath. The psychic field allows each orc to recognize who is the biggest among them, who then becomes the war boss of the WOG, in this case meaning a great sweeping war that the orcs carry out. Following the war boss, orcs begin spreading across a system in a wave of bloodlust and carnage, wiping out everything in sight until they eventually take enough losses that the WOG ends. The greatest WOG in history was led by a war boss known only as the Beast, a highly intelligent orc that managed to unite more orcs than ever before, and almost succeeded in conquering the entire galaxy. It was later revealed that the Beast was in fact six individual orcs that each commanded a legion of orcs. The Imperium of Mankind took massive losses while stopping the Beast's WOG and it's only a matter of time before another WOG of similar size will occur. Orcs aren't a complicated species, their lives revolving around fighting and more fighting, making them a pretty clear enemy to practically every other species. Some people may raise an eyebrow when first learning about Warhammer 40k and discovering that one of the principal species is just orcs, a familiar trope in fantasy, but not one usually seen in science fiction. Orcs in 40k certainly stand on their own, however, and although they have a tendency to become comic relief in some situations due to their cockney accents and love of loud guns, orcs are nonetheless a savage and ruthless threat.